Right. So this talk is about introducing how we run your Python 2021. Uh, well, hopefully at least. So uh, it's the presentation is about running the the in-person conference. So it's not about the online conference. Of course, we now know how to run online conferences, and we would be able to do that as well. But let's you know hope for the best, and then let's uh, see that we can we can actually run this in person again in Dublin. So <coughs> a bit about the, the EPS, the EuroPython Society. This is the organization behind uh, the EuroPython conference. It was founded in 2002 in Göteborg in Sweden when we had the conference there. And since it's been uh, providing the legal framework for everything, it knows it, it protects the, pr the trademarks, uh, makes sure that uh, we can enter contracts and so on. Uh, initially, it was just basically deciding or helping with the uh, decision process for the EuroPython location and uh, local teams essentially ran the whole conference. Um, this changed uh, since 2014. Uh, since then we, we basically took a more active role and since 2015 uh, we are working with, we started working with on-site teams and then in 2017 we basically switched to a completely remote setup meaning that the whole conference is more or less uh, organized by people around Europe uh, or even worldwide. So we, we do have uh, people, you know, from like Camilla, for example, from, uh, from Brazil. Uh, and, you know, we have lots of people joining. We have uh, Noah Chen, for example, is coming all the way from Taiwan to, to help us at the conference. And it's, it's really, it's, a f it's fun and it's a, we've built a good team around all of this. We found that we don't really need the on-site team anymore. We we do appreciate having help uh, on-site, and uh, but we don't rely on that anymore. And this is for mostly for financial reasons and for organizational risk reasons, because of course the EPS takes a lot of risk in running the conference. Uh, the the typical in-person conference has a budget of around six hundred thousand euros, so we move 600,000 euros around every single year. <coughs> if something fails, then um, this would cost us a lot and probably, uh, you know, have the EPS go bankrupt. So we have to be a bit careful about these things. I already talked about what the purpose is of the EPS, so I'm going to skip this slide. The model that we've decided to use is uh, a decentralized workgroup model. So we have different tasks that we have at the conference. We have different workgroups. Um, these work groups, they basically stay in place for every single year. So we don't uh, switch them in and out like we did in, in before when we had the on-site teams um, take care of these things and the local teams. Um, the major advantage of that is that we don't have this much loss of institutional knowledge. So if, if you run a conference, of course, you gain a lot of experience when doing that. and you can reuse that knowledge of next year. And with the uh, constant switching that we had of, of groups organizing the conference, we always lost all that knowledge. Uh, and every single year, basically, the group had to re <coughs> relearn everything or at least you know adjust again to the size of the EuroPython conference uh, compared to the local event. The EPS takes the financial risk. It enters the contracts. It's liable for everything. And we also deal with the taxes. So the structure that we have is we have a board. Uh, it's currently six members. It, it was eight members when we started uh, this year's term. Uh, we usually have around like eight or maybe ten members. Um, six members is not really yeah, it's not really big enough. Then we have the work groups, and of course we have the EPS members. The EPS members get to vote on uh, all the different. Uh, the, the, the setup of the board, the board members get voted in by the members. The members also have to, um, you know, release the liability of the board members at the General Assembly. The General Assembly is usually run at the EuroPython event, but this year, because we have it online, we decided to not have it uh, at the conference because it was simply too much work to prepare everything. 
and we're going to have the General Assembly uh, after the conference, probably a few weeks afterwards. So we're going to send the invites out for that. If you want to become a member, that's easily possible. It doesn't cost anything. You just go to our website and apply for membership. You just have to write why you would like to be a member and then the board has to vote you in and once the board has voted you in, you have voting rights and then you can vote at the uh, General Assembly. We also consider the EuroPython attendees members uh, of the EPS, even though they are not officially. So of course we listen to the EuroPython attendees. You know, we we always you know try to get feedback from them, try to improve things from year to year. Uh, we organize everything in Google Docs and and basically maintain all this knowledge in there and take the feedback into account for managing the next years. So this is a short overview of the conference development. We've been doing this, or EuroPython has been organized, not, not the EPS has organized everything, but EuroPython itself has been organized uh, for many, many years now. It's the 19th edition. We started in Charleroi in Belgium, which uh, is interesting. I was one of the, um, the executive committee members as well in that year. Uh, we start with 250 people. It doesn't sound like a lot, but we had all the, you know, we had Guido there. We had all the, all the, uh, you know, a lot of core developers there. It was really nice. Um, we had sandwiches for lunch, <laughs> so we started small. Um, that was fun. And then uh, every single year, you know, or every second year or every third year, we we then switch to a different city. And uh, now that we have this rem remote setup, we actually. Uh, switching every single year because ah, because we can, right? Because we can move around in Europe and that's the, the point of uh, switching. So you can see the development here. It's always around like 1100, 1200. Uh, it was uh, 1400 in Berlin. Um, this is a good size. We don't really want to want, want to grow uh, much beyond that. So this is a short overview of the timeline and, and the reason I'm presenting this is because the talk is about you know finding people who would like to s participate in the organization and so that you get to know when we will need a lot of help, I'm presenting this timeline. So the way it works is that we always run an RFP. RFP means the request for proposal. Uh, this is a commercial process that is usually run by larger companies when they have to buy something. So they ask a lot of vendors uh, with the, they send out the specifics of what they're looking for and then the vendors have to provide an offer back to them. Uh, it's a standardized process. Everyone knows how it works in the commercial industry and uh, especially the venues know how this works so they are very used to this kind of approach and that makes things a lot easier for us so what we do is we send out a large questionnaire which has all the the details or ask for all the details that we need we provide all the information about the size of the conference how many days we need what kinds of uh, tooling we need uh, the, the you know size of the rooms and all these things and then we get answers back from them it's a two-phase process, uh, two rounds. The reason why we do two rounds is because we want to we want to have the venues compete against each other, so that we get better prices from the venues. Um, and this has worked out really well. So the first round is always open for everyone. The second round is just three candidates, and then they have to uh, submit a second bid, usually lower than the first one. Uh, and then after we have then decided the location based on which venue we choose, we then uh, enter, you know, go into in contact with potential local teams that might be there because something that we have to do as a EuroPython conference is be, we have to be very attentive to uh, national conferences that already exist in the countries. We don't want to step on anyone's toes, so we always try to have the conference, you know, not as a competitor to the national conference, and so we try to be um, you know, play well, because there's no, I mean, there's no point in having EuroPython compete with a national conference. Um, right, so this whole process kicks off in August and September, ideally, of course. In reality, it's always a bit later, um, but this is just the ideal timeline. Uh, and then in October, we, we finish it. We can then, uh, you know, set up everything. We have to find accountants for doing things. We have to register for VAT taxes, and usually the accountants help us with that. 
we have to figure out how to tax uh, for the tickets, how to tax for the sponsor invoices, all these things. All of this is essentially done by the board members and the accountants, so this is not something where volunteers help. Um, but once we have decided, of course, then we can start with the with ramping up the initial work. So, for example, what typically happens is that the web uh, work group already starts working towards, you know, uh, making the improving the website. Every single year, we find something that doesn't really work as we would like it to work, and so we have some requests there, and and these requests are then implemented in a time frame or in sprints. In December, we typically then have the a pre-launch site web, uh, the pre-launch website started. This is uh, essentially a marketing website. Uh, which just has the basic information, so like the the uh, location, the time, and so on. We launch that before actually signing the contract uh, with the venue, usually, because the venue contract negotiations start after we've made the decision. Um, and then this contract negotiation typically lasts for two months. So what we usually do is in January, we, we, we then uh, sign the contract with the venue, we then launch the website, the main one, usually end of, Febr uh, end of January. Uh, February, we start the CFP, which is managed by the program work group. Um, then we have the start of the ticket sales by the web work group. Uh, in March, we st start the sponsor signups by the sponsors work group, and the sponsor brochure is uh, created by the marketing design work group. Well, actually, the marketing design work group doesn't really do much in this. It just manages the whole process and 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 does reviews. Uh, the actual brochure itself is created by our our designer, uh, Jessica. And then in April, um, after the CFP, we can then hopefully then publish the schedule, or at least what what we typically do is we first publish the ses the session list and then take the session list as a basis for for creating the schedule this is done by the program work group um so as you can see february to april to may that's uh, you know the very intense for the program work group uh the sponsor work group s starts working here and uh, this usually becomes it, it if it's first it, it's a slow start usually and then at closer to the conference it b gets very very intense for the sponsors work group because uh, sponsors typically need a lot of help uh, there are you know hundreds of emails going back and forth uh, to get everything signed up we have to then register with the uh, with their vendor systems and so on get the invoices sorted and all that stuff so all that is being done by the sponsors work group uh, and then after the schedule is published we can then also tell the designer how the schedule will look so that we can get a conference booklet so this is started here and then uh, usually takes a bit to to finish and then in june we order all the material the branding and stuff so lots of orders going out to um, t-shirt vendors uh, to amazon a lot to local vendors that we have we need to figure out where to get the badges all these things are done by the marketing design work group and then in july is typically the conference right so if you have any questions by the way then please put them into the q a session there uh, or otherwise we can also chat in the talk chat later on so this is how a typical work group structure looks like we usually have one or more chairpersons in the in the work groups um, the chairpersons are essentially accountable for what's what the work group needs to do so accountable in that case means that if you're a chair then uh, you know if, if your work group doesn't deliver then essentially you have to deliver so um, it's basically a way to well like I said in the in the timeline, we need certain things done by certain uh, time in, in certain time frames, and and we cannot really wait a lot. So uh, this is why we have these chairpersons in place, and then we have the work group me uh, members, of course, all work towards those goals. But sometimes it happens that we have signed up work group members who are in who become inactive or who don't really start to be active, and so then we have to remove those. It's always a risk, and this is something that needs to be managed by the by the chairpersons. Uh, the workgroups that we have are 
these on two pages. So administration, this is not really a work group, it's actually handled by the EPS board. The finance is uh, also going to be uh, done by the EPS treasurer mostly as the chair of course and but we can have uh, also have helpers in here so this is mostly about collecting invoices making sure that everything is uh, properly put into the budget into the ledger and so on so that we have control over what we're spending and where we're spending it what the risk is and uh, you know we always have to monitor ticket sales and all these things that's done in the finance work group. Sponsors, like I mentioned, has to do all the contact with the in communication with the sponsors. So that's um, a lot of emails, a lot of uh, back and forth. It's also doing co uh, conference calls sometimes to get sponsors on board and explain things to them. Uh, the communications work group could actually need a few more people. Uh, th this is the work group that's responsible for all the outside communication, so doing blog posts, uh, managing Twitter, uh, posting things on Telegram, making sure that everything is, um, you know, well under, um, th that the information that we generate, all the things that we need to communicate are properly communicated to the community. Uh, support is the work group that is managing the help desk. So if you write to help desk at europython.eu, this is the support work group that's uh, working on that one. And uh, they, in general, at, at for the in-person conference, also take care of the help desk, the registration desk uh, part of the um, the conference to to organize uh, everything there and and also take care of uh, managing the on-site volunteers for the in-person conference unlike for the online conference where it's not really possible to have on-site volunteers um, we usually have quite a few um, on-site volunteers who just you know do they sign up at the conference for doing things uh, they get t-shirts uh, as a small perk or recognition. They get on stage afterwards so that yeah, they get in the, in the closing session. Um, it's usually a lot of fun for the in-person event. So this is usually something that people really enjoy doing, uh, even though it takes away some of their conference, uh, you know, experience and time in terms of uh, watching talks. But it, it's very uh, fulfilling, I, I guess. Uh, for them just as it is for us you know running the conference and they get a bit of a feeling of what we are doing um, on a smaller scale there so we have those and the support work group also manages those uh, then we have financial aid this is for for the financial aid program that we're running for the in-person conference for the on the online conference we didn't have enough resources to do this so not enough people to actually manage it so we uh, decided not to do it Marketing design, I, as I said, is responsible for the booklets, uh, the the logo, the uh, the pre-launch website, and so on. Program work group does the CFP selection of talks, uh, the um, managing the schedule, managing all the interactions with with the speaker. So let's say a speaker wants to do the talk at a different time, then that kind of discussion needs to be done by the program work group. Uh, the web work group manages the development of the website and um, you know things like setup of of uh, the you know VMs and stuff. That kind of thing. So it's uh, standard web development essentially. Media team. This is the uh, usually the media team doesn't really have to do a lot for the in-person conference because we usually hire a recording company and so the media work group doesn't really have to do a lot. It just manages the relationships with the uh, media work group and uh, with the media company that we hire. Uh, this is of course a lot different for the online event where we uh, have to basically you know run everything ourselves and so. Uh, this year the media work group is actually the largest work group that we have and then uh, finally we have the code of conduct work group which is just for people uh, it's managed in a different way we always have uh, two males two females in there uh, it's um, it, it's a small team of, of people um, and and we you know getting in and out of, of, of that group is, well getting out is easy, but getting <laughs> in is not so easy because of course those people have to deal with uh, uh, sometimes with um, difficult to handle issues and uh, we need to work well as a team together. So this is where we, um, where we are looking for more help. Uh, 
just to get to give you an idea of how we work, most of the work is nowadays is done on Telegram. We also have mailing lists, of course. Uh, we manage everything, all the content, all the documentation on in Google Docs and management uh, worksheets that we have there. Like I said, the chairs are responsible. So that's all I wanted to say. I do see a couple of questions here. Um, I don't really know how much time I have, so let me see. Um, okay, 45, so 10 minutes I have. Right, so I have a uh, first question here. Which work group are most in need of, of help? So most in need of help, let me go back here. The program work group uh, uh, would need some more help. Uh, the web work group needs more help because we lost a couple of people who were very active in that group. Um, then we would we need people in communications, uh, managing Twitter, for example, or managing all the other uh, you know communication outlets that we have writing blog posts, that kind of thing. We need more people in support, but uh, for, for that support is mostly needed closer to the conference, so just in the few months before the conference and at the conference especially, we, not, we need people there. Uh, financial aid, we could uh, use more people. Um, so maybe sponsors as well. Um, yeah, but not many real people. Maybe maybe like one, two more people would be nice. Um, second question is, are you going to share the slides? Yes, of course. We always put the slides up online. On the website, I can show you where we put them. Just a second. So if you go here to our website, this is the EuroPython. The oh, this is the blog. This is not what I wanted to show. So we you go here to the EuroPython Society. Um, this is the society website is also a blog uh, and then if you go here and you go to the EuroPython conferences then uh, you get all the the listing of all the information that's available for the different conferences going back to the first year and we always um, uh, put links in here to to everything all the resources specifically to uh, this talk, we put that into the records, I think, right here. So you go to the records and then we have the European Path Society presentations here and you can see all the different um, slide decks here. We're going to put the 2021 presentation here as well and also the video once it's cut.